what do you want to talk about today? Let's talk about projectile motion. Okay, so what makes it a projectile? What kind of motion does it have? Well, it's got direct motion in two directions. Two directions. So okay. kind of like this. So you have motion up and motion horizontal. Right. Or down and horizontal. Okay. And so, or like this. Up and down. Okay. Or. Okay. So that kind of looks like a graph to me. I don't know. You're sneaking in some math here. Yeah. yeah. I'm not happy. <laughs> well, don't don't worry too much about it. Okay. Well, let's. Don't. Um. I remember X's and Y's for math. Right. Do, do should we assign those somewhere? Yeah. So X is going to be your up and or left and right. Okay. And Y and is horizontal going to be, motion. Right. Horizontal okay. motion. And then Y is going to be your up and down. Okay. Okay, so X, so that would be X and that would be Y. Okay, right. so we're kind of separating motion into two components here. Because okay. so far we've only talked about like either horizontal or up and down with free fall. Right. So now we're putting it together? Yes. Oh, gosh. So okay. let's think about like an outfielder throwing a ball all the way to home base, home plate. So he's going to take the ball and he's on the ground. So he's going to launch it up into the air and then it's going to fall back down to the ground. So okay. it's going to make a shape like that. That's it's called... A parabola. Whoa. You're yes. tossing some That's serious a... vocabulary there. Parabola. So I thought this was just called horizontally launched projectiles, though, these notes mm -hmm. today. So what, is that, what does that mean? Uh, if it's horizontally launched, it's just the second half of that parabola. Okay, so it's like it got let off from right here there. like a cannon or something right. and then it goes so think of like a car being th driven off of a cliff it's going to go out and fall down okay okay and so we've got two components x and y okay mm -hmm. so let's talk about this because if we're separating it all apart are we going to have two different velocities yes we are okay so we should probably label those because mm -hmm. i know all your teachers like labeling right okay so velocity x with a little x by it and velocity y that's going to be X horizontal. Is, right. Horizontal, left and right. And X velocity of Y is going to be your up and down. Okay. And then we also need to distinguish between like displacement, right, or right. distance. So can we just use X and Y for that? Yeah, we'll call that delta X and delta Y. That's okay. a change in the Y direction or change okay. in the X direction. Horizontal displacement. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Horizontal velocity, vertical velocity, horizontal and mm -hmm. vertical. vertical. Displacement. Displacement. So we're going to replace our D in our equation with X and Y. Right. Okay. And then one other component is acceleration. Mm -hmm. So for vertical, I'm thinking back to free fall because we just learned about that. For, right. So for vertical, that's going to be... It's going to be falling. It's going to be the acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So that's our Y acceleration. Uh -huh. And then what about X? Uh, X is always going to be constant. Okay, so there is none. There's right. no acceleration. Right. Okay, so now let's look at those kinematic equations because I know you're probably going to ask me to figure some stuff out. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go through these um, and figure out how they change. So the first one we've got is A equals VF minus VI over time. Okay, mm -hmm. so on the X side... You told me that A is zero. Right. Acceleration is always zero. So that equation just goes away. Right. Because if everything's equal to zero, then there's nothing. Okay. And on the Y side, we know this is negative 9.8 every time. Mm -hmm. VF, we don't know what that is, but mm -hmm. we can find that. VI, VI is going to be zero because it's dropping, right? Right. Okay. So that goes away. And over time. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's going to look like on the y side? Right. Okay. Um, let's look at another one. What about a equals vf squared minus vi squared over 2d? Okay. Once again, for the x, the acceleration is going to be zero. So we can't, so use, we that can't use that equation whenever we're talking okay. about this. Okay. And so on the y side, we have negative 9.8. Mm -hmm. We have vf squared. vi squared was zero. Mm -hmm. So that goes away. And two, and we're replacing the D, so since this is the Y side, it would be two times Y, so that's right. like the height. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then let's look at another one of our equations. A equals, oh, whoops, no, D mm -hmm. equals mm -hmm. BIT plus one half AT squared. Okay. Okay, so on the Y, or I'm sorry, on the X side, we know A is zero, mm -hmm. so that one half times 0 times t squared is all going to go away. But the vit, we have that. Right. So we can we have one for the x side. Yay. So our distance is going to be x. 
We're going to use the horizontal velocity mm -hmm. times time. So we have an equation on the x side. Right. Okay. On the y side, we don't have any initial velocity. So that has 0 times t, so that goes away. Mm -hmm. I want to replace the d with the y. Mm -hmm. And then I have 1 half, and my acceleration is negative 9.8 times t squared. Okay, so these are my equations that I can use now for horizontal launch. Okay, Mr. Domboski, we are going to do some data practice problems. Sounds good. Let's Perfect. take a look. Okay, so you guys turn to page three in your packet and follow along with us and write all this stuff down so you know how to do it. Okay, so what's the first one? Uh, it says you accidentally kick your keys horizontally at eight meters per second off the edge of a cliff. You hear them land 3.5 seconds later. How far from the base should you look for your keys? How tall is the cliff? Okay, so this is kind of making an arc right here like uh -huh. this. That's what a horizontal launch projectile is. Right. Okay, so um, the 8 meters per second, we know meters per second is what? Uh, it's going to be a velocity. Okay, and it says horizontally. So remember X and Y in math, which one's horizontal? X, uh, or y? X is horizontal. X. X okay, is so I have this little chart. You guys have a chart just like this on your, in your pocket. And so I'm going to put the 8 here for my velocity for X. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have 3.5 seconds later. What seconds? It's going to be your time. Time. And time is going to be the exact same in both columns every time because it's going to land at the same time because mm -hmm. it's one object, that even though sense. we're separating it into X and Y, which we talked about in the notes. Okay, so we have a couple gaps here. We One thing we always know is the Y acceleration. Okay, okay. so Y acceleration is going to be... Negative 9.8. And we know that because negative 9.8 is what? Gravity. Gravity. Okay, so we're going to put that in here too. So I have a question mark here. It wants to know how far from the base so that if we draw a little picture here, it wants to know this distance right here. That's our x. And then it also wants to know how tall the cliff is. So it wants to know this distance right here, and it's a y. Now, a lot of times it matters if, which equation you do first um, because you might have multiple things missing in a column. So how do we know which one to do first? Well, this time it doesn't really matter because we actually have only one question mark in each column. So it oh, okay. Matter. But let's do the first question first. So it says how right. far from the base. So that would be your x question. Right. And so we went through our equations in the notes. Mm -hmm. And our only real x equation is x equals velocity of x times t. Okay? So on x, we're going to plug in our v in the x column was 8. Mm-hmm. And our time is 3.5. So all we have to do is multiply those two together. And that's going to give us... 28. 28 meters. Meters, because it's a distance. Yes. So that means this is a 28 right here. All right. 28 meters out. Okay, so then the other side... Okay. Wants uh, the y. Okay, so it wants the height. Right. So if we look at our list of equations, and you guys can look right above the problem, you have your list of equations there. And the one that has velocity acceleration and time and y but no final velocity is that first one under vertical motion and that is y, y equals one half acceleration times time squared very good okay so now we need to solve for y so we have one half times negative 9.8 times time was what 3.5 3.5 squared okay so now here's the tricky part Where, when do you square at the beginning or the end uh, at the beginning. At the beginning, because we're not going to square all of it, just the 3.5. Right. So when we do that, that's going to give us 1 half times negative 9.8 times 12.25. So now, I can just multiply that all out, and I get y equals negative 60 meters. So why is that negative? That's the tricky part again. Okay, it's negative because it's falling. So as it falls okay. downwards, that's going to be negative. Remember, we assign positive and negative in physics. So positive mm -hmm. is going up, negative is going back down. So okay. it just means it's 16 meters high. So that's how you do that. Does that okay. make sense? Makes sense to me. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. Okay. So we've got an airplane that's traveling 1,001 meters above the ocean. It needs to drop a box of supplies to a ship below. The plane is flying horizontally with a ver velocity of 417 meters per second. How much time will it take for the supplies to reach the ground? What is the horizontal distance that the supplies travel? Okay, so again, 
we're just doing the same kind of arc here, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just a horizontal projectile. So it says it's 1,001 meters. What does meters tell us? That's a distance. That's a distance. And this time, it's above, so that's our right. y, y distance. distance. Right. So we're going to have our y distance over here. And I'm going to make that negative for the same reason we just talked about, because right. it's falling. So Positive it's would be going up. Negative is going down. Mm -hmm. And let's see. What else do we know? We have 417 is our velocity, and it says horizontally so where should I put that that's gonna be your X velocity 417 mm -hmm. okay and then that's all we have so what is the other thing that we know here the other thing that our initial velocity acceleration uh, the initial accel or acceleration I'm sorry acceleration is negative 9.8 okay because it's falling already right. right okay so now this time it's asking us how how much time it'll take Okay, so we don't know time, and it's also asking us the horizontal distance. So that was right. that distance from the base right there. That. So this is what you were talking about, where we don't have two things on our x column. So we've got to solve the y column first. Right. We only have one unknown in our y column. That's right. So this time it matters. So we're going to start with y, and if we look, we have y, a, and t. So we can use the same equation we used in the last problem, one half a t squared. Okay, so I'm going to plug in what I know. I have negative 1,001, 1 half, negative 9.8, and then t squared. So I'm solving for t. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do my algebra. So I'm going to leave this alone for a second and multiply out my 1 half times my negative 9.8. We get negative 4.9 times t squared. We divide by negative 4.9 on both sides. It's going to cancel over here. And that gives me about, the negatives are going to cancel. And so that gives me about 204, and that's my t squared. What's the last thing I need to do? So we're, we're squared, so we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to do the square root. Yeah, don't forget that square root, guys. That's an easy one to forget. Mm -hmm. So our time is the square root of 204, which is 14.3 seconds. Right. And now since we have our time for y, that tells us the time for x, because it's landing at the exact same time. Excellent. So I can cross this out, but I can also cross this out. And so now I only have one question mark in my x column, so now I can solve for x. So that's right. why we did that first. So I'm going to take my x equation. Remember, look at the top of your page. You only have 1. x equals bx times t. And then we are going to solve. So we have 417 for our bx. We're going to use our answer we just got, which is 14.3 for time. Mm -hmm. Multiply it through, and what do we get? 5,963.1 meters. Wow, so that went 5,000 meters. That's a long distance. That's a long distance. All right. So that is how you do horizontal launch problems.